Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, and it's nice to be back in the shop. Boy, I've been running around doing this and doing that, but I believe when you see this, it'll be Sunday afternoon. <laughs> At least, that's when I hope this video goes up, and it will be a day of rest for me. This afternoon, while I'm filming here, I am uh, drinking a steaming hot cup of coffee in something that's pink. Oh, wait a minute. It's been so long. Today's cup of coffee is brought to you by... A cup of coffee, a sandwich, and you. A cozy corner, a table. That's right, it's brought to you by the Anchor Hawking Company. And uh, I really should say hawking because this pattern, I think, is 19, it's the early to mid 30s before 1937. So it's probably just hawking when uh, this pink hobnail was made. And if you were watching me uh, oh, a few days ago, you know I just bought this uh, across the street from Atlantic City High School in a Goodwill store, or actually it was a uh, Salvation Army. These are lemon snaps. Ah, uh, the ginger snaps will be back when autumn rolls around next month. It'll be autumn the end of next month. Yeah, it certainly will be. Well, let me have a sip. It's kind of warm. Mmm, you have a sip. And I will eat that ginger, I'll eat that lemon snap after we go off camera. But let me put this coffee down. Today is just a thrift haul. Everything that you see is currently listed. Some of it was listed yesterday, some of it was listed four or five days ago, and there may only be one or two days left before some of these auctions end. So if you see anything you like, don't hesitate. Jump over to the eBay store if uh, you're interested. The link is in the description box below, and that's where you'll be able to find these items, either listed as a buy it now or, or at an auction. Okay, well, first thing that I wanna show you is what's sitting right here. There's a funny looking spout sticking out, and let's take a look at what it is. You actually already saw it, but now it's all cleaned up and listed for sale. It's a beautiful Farberware electric percolator from the 1930s. Uh, practically unused. And I'll tell you what I mean by practically in a minute. These are wooden handles, not Bakelite. Sometimes they were wood, wooden and just painted. And these are painted black. Um, this has the capacity for, oh, I don't remember how many cups you can get, mm, oh, maybe eight, eight or 10 cups out of that. And we can see that it is super clean. There's the uh, basket. And you can take a look at the inside. If you're new to the old curiosity shop, you may not know. Um, and you know, you may say, well, I've seen coffee pots online that go cheaper than the ones you sell. Well, I'll tell you what, you better read the descriptions. My coffee pots are in like new condition, are percolators. I don't buy them if they're nasty. I thoroughly clean them with a, with a solution and then I percolate coffee and I drink it. And you know what I say, <laughs> if I survive and my body hair doesn't fall off, it's good for sale. So they work, they're clean, they're ready to be put in your kitchen and used. So there's the percolator with its electric cord, always in good condition, there it is. And that's a Farberware. It has one ding on the back where somebody, see that, one little dimple there, but it's all the way on the back of a coffee pot. Who's gonna see that? And to go with it, you're getting a Farberware cream and sugar as well. These may not have come with this, but they match it very beautifully and they are also uh, Farber Brothers Brooklyn. So this set is wonderful. 
Now, I've done a lot about electric coffee pots before percolators, and you may not be aware, so I'll just go ahead and tell you, this is not automatic, which means it will not shut itself off. So, you watch it as it percolates, and these heat up and they percolate very quickly. When the coffee gets as strong as you like it, you simply unplug it. It's gonna stay hot in there for a long time. These babies, you could heat a small apartment with them. Um, but you can't plug it in and then walk away from it and come back an hour later. It will still be percolating and you will have a thick substance, something like mud. Very nice, okay, ready to be used. Now, I've got another coffee item I'm gonna show you in a minute. But let's do these. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I have two ashtrays from the 1930s. And this is the large, a large one, and this is a smaller one. And we can see they're made by the same company. It's the same pattern. Now this is a good lesson in don't worry if things aren't marked. There's no mark at all on this one. No mark at all. But we can clearly see it is identical in pattern to the smaller one. See the little roulette wheel type pattern on the outside? The starburst on the bottom and the matchbook holder in the center. The little one is marked Hazel Atlas, but the big one ain't. Well, they're both Hazel Atlas and they are chip and crack free. They do contain uranium and they will glow under a black light. Uh, nope, not yet. Okay, let's do, let's do You Light Up My Life. Debbie Boone. Uh, we're going to do some candle sticks, candle stick holders. And we'll start off with these two in blue, which are beautiful. Look at how they glow. These are Depression Era, and they could be any number of companies, as you know, with the candle sticks. It's you really have to pay close attention and look at measurements if you want to pinpoint whether it is New Martinsville, Fenton, Cambridge, and so forth. But these are really pretty blue, not 1960s blue, but 1930s candle holders. Candles not included. Sorry for the uh, contrasting colors there. I don't. I couldn't find any other candles at the moment. But there you have it. So two of these, lovely. I'm still here, I'm just down on the flow. All right. This is a Fenton pair. And these little guys are sort of in a lotus leaf pattern with three little feet. And you'll find these in jadeite. You'll find them in just about every color of glass that Fenton made. Uh, so I have two, and they're also chip and crack free. They look really nice with orange candles for Halloween and the autumn season. But there you see what they look like with a red candle in them. Yeah. This is the first week of August, which means we've only got a month and a few weeks left of summer because autumn is something like September 22nd. Pumpkin spot. Oh, I won't say it. It's too early. All right. So those, those are lovely. Let's look at, we'll continue with the candlestick, candlesticks. Here are two uh, uh, Fenton, and these are unmarked, but they're the beautiful um, silver crest. There we see. And then look down on the insides of them. It's really wonderful the way these are. Your candle goes right in there like that. And they don't really, these candles are a little too big, but. Anyway, you get the idea. So all of the wax is going to gather down in there, I suppose. But these are pretty. And um, for red or green candles at Christmas time or blue candles in the winter time. Again, as you know, chip and crack free. I try not to buy damaged goods. I 
Every once in a while, something comes home with me, and it's messed up. Let's see here. I'm not finished with the candles yet. All right, let's do these. This might be my favorite pair. Uh, these were marked as pottery, ceramic, but they're not. They're glass, and they have a silver overlay on them. Do you see this right here? Oh, they're glass. Okay, look at that. Aren't those beautiful? There are no marks on these. Don't know the maker. Fingerprints all over them, uh, but wonderful. I already sold uh, rats. I already sold my orange marigold bowl. You know what? Hold on for a second. Even though it's already sold, I will have some more at some point. So hold on. Sorry if you're catching the back side of me there. You're not supposed to turn your back to your audience. I put this up as a buy it now and it sold right away, but can you imagine these candles next to it? In the autumn season? Speaking of the autumn season, I have music playing and it's jumping all over the place and it sounds like Christmas music has just come on. It doesn't make a difference, but just so you know, I'm aware that I think Christmas music is about to come on. Uh, take a look at that. So this is gone <laughs> and I got to get it in the mail tomorrow. But if you've got some marigold um, uh, carnival glass or depression glass, these would look great with it. Very nice on that pair. I love these. All right, making a lot of noise. I have one more set of candle stick holders. These, one of them has a little bit of damage and I didn't know until I got them home. They're beautiful amethyst and I think these might be a Fenton uh, mold, a Fenton shape, um, but they could easily be a Cambridge shape. So uh, unmarked, I can't really get you to see. It's not black glass, it's a true amethyst. There, it's kind of showing up a little bit better. Okay, this one is in perfect condition. This one has a, what do you call it when a, um, when a, when a rock hits your windshield and it puts a little internal crack if you feel the outside, you, you might not feel anything. Well, that's what we've got going on here. There is an internal, little bit of an internal fissure or something, you know, sort of crack right there, but it's right there, you see it? But I feel nothing on the outside. There's no external, you know, crack. And when you feel the inside, that's just wax. You don't feel anything either. So. It's, I don't want you to worry about, well, if I stick a candle in there, is the thing going to fall apart? No, it's really solid. And I put, I've had, I have had the candles in it. So it's not something that you really, again, you would have to be pickety, pickety, picky, picky, uh, to see that if, if a person comes over and examines your candlesticks that closely, although you do, you really can see it there. You get the candle in there and it's just not that noticeable, but it's there. Okay. Those are nice and tall. That's it for the candles. Let me have a drink of this coffee. Oh, I'm telling you what, did you see my debacle yesterday? You saw what I did. If you looked at my, my community page, did you see it? Mmm, it's awful. I had some chicken and broccoli casserole I wanted to heat up. I wasn't paying any attention. And I put a serving of it on one of my 1930s Anchor Hocking Manhattan dessert plates. The plate wasn't in the refrigerator. It wasn't a cold plate. It was room temperature, and room temperature for me is about 85 degrees. And the casserole wasn't frozen, and I didn't cover it up. 
I had a little plastic bowl over top of it. I only zapped it for a minute and a half and that plate cracked right down the center. I was so mad. I had nothing to eat. There I stood with a tear-stained face, a broken plate, and nothing to eat. I went to bed. No, actually, I <laughs> walked across the street and got myself a chicken Caesar salad wrap. Anyway, a lot of you were surprised that a piece of glass that thick would crack in a microwave, but it did. Uh, it is non-tempered glass, so just be careful with your old glass. I was not paying attention to what I was doing. Okay, so it shouldn't have been in the microwave. That's the, that's the moral of the story. Look at this. It is a made in Japan 1930s vase with moriage decoration. And look at the parrot. That's not high relief. That's just hanging on to the outside. That thing is right, well, it's not a parrot, whatever it is. I love that bird on the outside of the piece. The colors are beautiful. There's no damage on this. It's just a small vase, as you can see. And all this moriage decoration here. Yeah, I know the Christmas music is playing. Who knows what it'll go to next? Ska? Schlager, I mean, it just, it's jumping all over the place. Plesmer, <laughs> just, uh, that's wonderful. And that's, that only has like a day or two left. I better stop waving it around. Uh, we're gonna have another accident. Made by Hazel. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Ooh, wait a minute. Okay. I'm still here. Capri, uh, Capri. Capri, uh, 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 blue, big bowl, big, big cereal bowl or salad bowl, a hazel atlas, just that one bowl for those of you who have that particular pattern. And then I think I showed you this. Uh, she's unmarked. So there she is. Did I show you her? I think so. She's listed and she doesn't have any issues with her. She's in good shape. Yep, head vase. And then I've got my hors d'oeuvre fish. He, it only has like a day left as well. Um, okay, so you stick your uh, toothpicks in there. I think I, I should, anthropomorphic, I showed you these. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna do, not gonna. This is a beautiful hand painted dresser tray, porcelain tray look at that you know for the vanity it's a nice big one too all right and I don't see where the limo it's, I don't see Limoges on it I think it's ceramic and not porcelain uh, maybe it is it's painted by M Sparrow whoever M Sparrow was and it is chip and crack free and it's a lovely piece don't just put it on your dresser, put it on your coffee table. I wouldn't keep my remote controls on there, but maybe some potpourri if you don't have an animal that tries to get into it. A candy box, candy jar. This one is really nice. And it's a nice big one and it's etched. And you're tired of hearing me say, everybody made them, but you already knew I was going to say it. Everybody made them. One of the most popular gift items of the 20s and 30s. Beautifully etched. Look at that. See it on the lid? And, you know, I think in my auction listing I put... Uh, red and white striped uh, candy pieces in here to show you, you know, sort of what it looks like at Christmas time. But these clear candy jars from the Depression era are very versatile because whatever candy you put in it, it's perfect for that season. So if you don't want a whole bunch of stuff, you're in a small apartment, but you want something elegant, 
that you can use year round. Just fill this up with seasonal candy year round and you've got a big hit. That's really, and it's in great condition and it's lovely. Okay. For the, oh, let's see. Oh, okay, let's do this. We're almost finished. This is a quickie today. Made um, after the war, um, after the war, I don't know how far after the war, but after the war, because you wouldn't, they wouldn't have had the aluminum to do it during the war. In the original box, this is, uh, it says nature made aluminum friendly to food wherever. The Aluminum Cooking Utensil Company, New Kensington, Pennsylvania. Six cup drip coffee pot. This is new in the box, unused. Probably dates to about 1946 or 47. Yeah, as soon as uh, aluminum was ready for uh, domestic use for consumer products in this country. Let me get it out of the box. And just take a look at the condition. When I say new in box, I mean this thing has been sitting in this box since it was given to Aunt Mildred and then Aunt Mildred decided she wasn't going to use it. Hold on now. I'm dropping things. Look at it. Look at this. Look at how deco the handle is. So we're still seeing the streamlined deco influence even after the war. Look at the lid. All right, everything is here. So you have the pam pamphlet, pamphlet. <laughs> I used to know somebody that said pamphlet and it used to drive me crazy, pamphlet. <laughs> I hope you don't say pamphlet. Um, so there are all the parts, yeah, the pot, and then the coffee grounds go in there, or the coffee, right? And you pour the hot water in there. That's the dripolator part, and there's the lid. And it tells you a little story here, the way they used to do in, in, with the advertising in those days. And so sometimes you can tell back here, uh, it looks probably like it's 1946. You see the 46 at the end of that number. So this, this that sounds about right. So you also get a box of the filter papers for the wherever drip coffee pot. This will keep you in business for a long time. Look at all of these. It's, they're all in there. You get all these packs. I don't know how many per pack. It says 100 and you can see how many. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 800 filter papers inside I told you this has never been used so what do you do you take it apart like this take off the lid the bottom of it you twist it and you pop it off and this will make six cups and it tells you how many how much coffee to put in it what was that um, I'm seeing things so you put the coffee grounds in there and then it locks in place here. So you push this in. I don't know if you can see that. All right, and then you twist it. All right, so it's locked in place. You don't heat your water up in this, you heat your water up in something else. And then you put this on the top, right? Pull your hot water in and it drips through. And then you can take this part off I can't believe that Christmas music. And then you have your co you can serve your coffee from this, right? And uh, you just dump your grounds out of that when you're done and wash it. But I, I, yeah, 1946, and it is, as I said, it is as clean as it can be in beautiful shape. I don't think you'll find one as uh, clean as that unless you stumble upon another one that's new and unused. That's going to be it for today, but I will be back tomorrow with more. I've got more thrift hauls for you. 
Yes, I do. And later on this week, you're going to listen to the mighty Midmer Midmer Losh pipe organ at Convention Hall in Atlantic City. I'll tell you more about that later, so make sure you stay tuned this week to the Old Curiosity Shop. Thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now.